Today, we're going to be talking about one of the most important digital assets that you have in your business. It's the website header. So many people have the worst looking website headers and it's not working for them. Today, we're going to fix that. I'm going to walk you through the eight key elements that should be in your header and a few tips for how to make it look better. Let's not have website shame anymore. It ends today. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hey there, this is Corinna Bench, and welcome to the My Digital Farmer Podcast. In today's market, it's not enough to just grow your product. You've got to know how to sell it, too. Welcome to the My Digital Farmer Podcast, where we reveal online marketing strategies and tips to help farmers like you get better and more confident at marketing. Learn how to find more customers, increase your sales, and build a strong brand for your farm. Let's start the show. Well, welcome to episode 194 of the My Digital Farmer podcast. I'm your host, Corinna Bench, one of the farmers at Shared Legacy Farms out in Elmore, Ohio. I'm also the founder of MyDigitalFarmer.com, which is all about trying to help other farmers like you get more confident in your marketing and sales strategy so that you can grow a profitable business. How's everyone doing today? Welcome back to the show. A big shout out to all of my regular listeners who tune in from week to week. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are new to the podcast, welcome to you as well. I'm so glad you're here today and I hope that you get a lot out of this show. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast and go check out some of my back issues. I always encourage people to go to the beginning and listen to the first 10 because I actually designed those when I first made them to be an on-ramp into the marketing space, to be like the 101 fundamentals. But there's a lot of other great episodes in my archives that you could just kind of pick through and look at the titles and say, wow, I, I want to learn about that. I was actually organizing my my uh, content plan for the podcast last week, putting that all together. And I know it can be really overwhelming if you're new to the show and you see that there are 193 episodes before this one. <laughs> so um, a lot of there's a lot of good stuff in there, though. I feel like I've covered a lot of the fundamentals already. But as I was putting together next year's content, I, I saw that there's still so many things that I could talk about. I have guests lined up. It's going to be exciting. So I hope you're looking forward to another season with me. Um, I also want to make sure you know about my email list. If you haven't subscribed to my email list, man, it's so good. You can go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash subscribe to make sure you're getting my weekly email. This is why that might be important to you. If you're trying to learn how to get better at marketing, when you subscribe, you automatically get this three month long email sequence that drips out to you, uh, one email per week for three months. And each one of those has been carefully written and sequenced in the right order to kind of expose you to some really cool resources and gifts, um, freebies that are going to shortcut some of your marketing process. And I kind of curate the best of the best, not only of my podcast, but of other books and people out there that are doing great things. So it's such a good um, email sequence to to subscribe to, and you're going to learn a ton. So I really encourage you to go there. That's mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash subscribe. All right. So what's going on? This month, it's January. We are in the middle of my CSA startup challenge in my uh, Facebook group for CSA farmers. If you don't know about that, you should go check it out. I'm having a blast right now. We're spending five days. It's a free challenge, the CSA startup challenge. Um, for five days, I'm showing up every day and I'm talking through one key decision that you need to make when you're first setting up your CSA. And those are all like quick videos. You can go and watch them. They're going to stay up in the group probably through the end of February at least. 
So even if you're listening to this later, you can go back and find it. Do a search for the CSA Marketing Discussion Group on Facebook and then just request access and you can get in and go look for them. But we're doing that right now. And it's super fun because January is always like CSA focus month for me because um, this is the time of year if a CSA farmer is going to start a CSA for the first time. This is kind of when they're thinking about it. And I have an online program called CSA Quick Start that this is the month when I really push that and plug that and promote that. So if you want to kind of learn the ropes and understand some of the key elements that you need to put in place in your CSA, you should definitely go subscribe to that. You can do that at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash CSA startup. And that will get you the daily email. Even if you start late, like it's going to start with day one of the challenge. You'll get the video, you'll get the key lesson. And then there's always like a homework assignment that you can do that day. Very short, uh, goes along with the challenge of the day. And hopefully by the end of five days, you've got some of those key pieces and decisions made that are going to unlock you and allow you to keep moving forward as you grow your CSA. So hopefully some of you are going to want to do that. It's going to be fun. I'm having a blast. All right. Today, my topic is website headers. Yeah, website headers. I have had this on my list of topics for a really long time. I recently just spent some time inside of my website this past week reworking and tweaking the website header. I think this deserves its own episode because that particular piece of real estate on the digital front porch of your business, your website, is so important. You've got to really nail the language there, the tagline, the image behind it, the call to action button. There are some key things that can really help your, the scroller, you know, who's coming to check out your website can really help them decide within the first few seconds whether or not they want to keep scrolling down your website and learning more about you. So, I thought, man, let's have a whole topic where we just talk about great website headers. Now, I I think one of the best ways to optimize your own website header is, well, first of all, to listen to this podcast, but also to go and look at other great websites and check out their headers. Even if they're not in the farming space, it helps to find some that are farmers for sure, but to to go and just Google like great website designs or story brand website designs, something like that. And you'll, you'll be taken to all different kinds of blog posts that will show you sample website headers and just looking at them and seeing what are the patterns that I notice? What is my eye drawn to? What does, what seems pleasing to my eye? What is not confusing? What's clear? And you'll see a lot of ideas. You'll get a lot of ideas for what you can be doing to make your website header even better. But we're going to talk through some of that stuff right now. So if you're one of these farmers and has a little bit of website shame, I've been there before, my friends. I know what you're talking about. Like maybe you don't even send people to your website because it's so bad or it's so unclear. You're not sure it's even updated. So if that's you, raise your hand, hold it up proud. It's okay. We're all there at one point. Here's something that you can do that's a small step forward in getting your website a little bit better. You don't have, I'm not saying today to go and redo the whole homepage of your website. That's a big ask. But just going and fixing that first piece on the top, the website header, could be something that you might spend 30 minutes to an hour on and it could make a huge difference and it might just get the ball rolling for you to start working on the rest of it. So let's start out by just making sure we all know what the website header even is. So the the website header is the first thing that visitors see when they come to your website. It is the area above the fold. Now, if you don't know what above the fold means, this is a term that's used in marketing a lot. It's it's a reference actually back to the newspaper era when we all used to get newspapers. And it's that section above the fold of the newspaper 
where you saw the main headline of the day. And this was like the prime real estate on the newspaper because people would make decisions on whether or not to grab that newspaper and buy it based on what they saw on the header, right? So they put their leading story there, great picture, drawing the eye and so forth. So the area above the fold on the website is the area that's basically viewable on the screen before a person has to start scrolling with their finger or their mouse if they're on a desktop. Okay, so think of it as the front page of the newspaper, okay, the headline, the first impression, and it needs to communicate clearly and quickly what you do, what you sell, what you're all about. So I think it's the most important part of the messaging of your website because people will decide in like five seconds if they're going to stay on your website based on the clarity and the message of your header image. That's why I think it's so important to take some time to optimize this and update this from time to time. Or if you are one of those farmers that maybe doesn't have a great website, this is something that you can do that's quick and fast that actually might have a pretty big impact because it is kind of the you know, in the newspaper era, sometimes people only read the first page of the newspaper, the front section above the fold. So, you know, if you can get the most important stuff in there, it might make a difference and lead to more conversions and more leads. So let's talk about some best practices when it comes to designing the message and the look of your website header. And I have several tips that I'm going to share today. If you want, you can come back later and listen to this again and write them all down. My hope is that you will take in today's message. I think that one or two things are going to jump out at you, even if you have a pretty decent website, and it's going to make you want to go and update something later on today. And that's my hope. You'll hear something today that's going to be a quick tip or an idea you hadn't thought of that is an easy fix and that you'll be inspired to go into your website tonight and make an adjustment that just might make a huge difference. Okay, so I want you to listen for some of those quick and easy things that you might be able to to do today um, to fix your website header and make it better. So let's start out with my first tip. And this is where um, I say make sure your website header includes the eight key elements. Okay. (laughs) Yes. I'm going to walk you through all eight of them. This is probably going to be the bulk of the podcast episode. I'm going to first just list them off for you. And then I'll talk a little bit more detailed about each of them. So they are the tagline, a great hero image underneath navigation links, because your menu is a part of your header, right? your company logo, a call to action button, your contact information, social media icons, and if possible, a shopping cart icon. All right, so let's talk about these one by one. Number one, the tagline. The tagline is your key piece of persuasive copywriting on your website. And it needs to explain what you do in a nutshell. Sometimes I will see website designs where the tagline is very vague and fluffy. So it might have some emotional language in it, but I can't tell what exactly it sells with just this emotive language. So, you know, an example might be bringing hope to the world. Well, you know, that's not very clear. A lot of things bring hope to the world. How exactly are you bringing hope to the world? So using maybe a sub tagline underneath that to explain the product, to specify the product and how it's bringing hope to the world, that would help. Basically, one of the things we're looking for when we put a tagline together is that it needs to pass the grunt test. And the grunt test is this phrase that I learned from Donald Miller, who wrote the amazing marketing book called Building a Story Brand. You should all have that book and read it. 
twice if you haven't already. Um, he teaches about the Gruntess, which is basically this idea that you have to imagine that a caveman comes and looks at your business or looks at your website. And if a caveman can grunt out what exactly it is that you do and can understand what you're selling and what you're all about, then you're good to go. Okay. So if I come to your website right now and I see your header and I see this tagline image, can I tell what problem you solve for me? Or can I tell that you are going to give me what I want? So these are two powerful questions to ask to find your tagline. What problem do you solve or what does your customer desire? What is the desired transformation that they seek? Not just the product itself, because the product is the means to that end. The vegetable box, in my case for my CSA, is a means to a greater transformation. And so if I can somehow tap into that language in the tagline, then that can communicate a whole lot and it can inspire the person to keep reading. Now, I'm constantly testing out my tagline. Um, last week, it was bringing the local farmer back to your kitchen table. And then I had like a sub tagline under that that talked about how they could either join my CSA or they could buy a la carte from my online store. And this past week, I actually went and changed it again and I put it back to a weekly box of veggies from your local farmer as the main tagline. And then under that, I have some other language about how they can go about doing that. You can go check out what my tagline is right now if you want at sharedlegacyfarms.com. And if you're listening to this 12 months from now, it might be a different tagline, but I'm always testing it out. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think we get better and better at figuring out what that key phrase should be. And I also think that our taglines change over time as our business focus changes and as we get more clear about what our purpose and mission is. So I'm not going to go too in the weeds here because I have an amazing episode, episode 39 called Formula for a Perfect Tagline. Man, that could be like its own webinar training just about how to find a great tagline. Just go listen to that and you are going to learn a ton about how to find a great tagline, okay? So second thing, your image, the website header image is a form of copywriting. It is a form of persuasive messaging. And so many people miss the mark with their picture. They could be doing so much better. Like I've just, a lot of times when I audit people's websites, I almost always have to say something about their website header image where it's like it's okay but maybe it's a little pixelated or maybe it's just not the right image maybe it could be hey let's get one with a customer actually using your product so a person can imagine themselves when they come to your website with your product in hand right there's just always a little bit more that we could be doing to optimize that so um, the picture should support your tagline in explaining what you do in a nutshell. So it could be an image of your product. That's what mine is actually right now. It is a gorgeous close-up of our CSA vegetable box, like from the top down. It's been that for quite a while. Um, It could be your customer using your product. It could be a visual depiction of the life transformation that your product provides. So if you could follow your customer around for a week with a video camera and capture how they're actually living out their life and, and you know take pictures like snapshot moments of uh, a moment in their life that's been impacted by your product. Like here's an example of how my life's different because of my CSA share. Like my kids, you know, a picture of my kids eating something for lunch, pulling something out of their lunch pail um, at school. I know we don't have lunch pails. You know what I mean? Getting something from their lunch at school and it's kohlrabi sticks, right? Like snap, I would take a picture of that. To me, that's a, a desired life transformation that every mom wants for their kids. And my farm is helping make that happen. So that could be an example. Or that moment when an amazing meal comes together on the table and it feels like you're eating at a five-star restaurant. Click, 
you know, if you can capture that moment. Those are the kinds of images of life transformation that you're providing for your clients. If you can capture that and put that on the header image, wow, right? Help a person see that almost like holding up a mirror to them and they imagine their life looking that way. So sometimes just a quick changing out of the picture can go a really long way. And I also want to just mention here that that I think that the image and the tagline work really close together. So if your tagline is a little bit more vague and esoteric and like uh, feelings language, you can put a great picture behind it that will show your product, right? The actual product itself. And then you don't even have to say the product with the words. They can see that with their eyes. So something to think about. That might be the thing you're going to go fix right now is you're going to pick out a different picture and swap it out for your header image. I also want to bring up here to make sure that the image and the text typography are working together. What do I mean by that? Well, sometimes I see websites where there's too much tagline, too much text on top of the image. And so we can't even really see the cute girl's face who's eating your kohlrabi or the family eating the meal or the the mom cooking an amazing dinner, holding a glass of wine. We can't really see their face because the text is covering over part of the image or we haven't taken the image with some negative space in it thinking, oh, that's where I'm going to lay over the text from my website in that negative space on the photo. Today's podcast is sponsored by my webinar for beginning CSA farmers. Have you been wanting to start a vegetable CSA, but you're a little overwhelmed by all of the things that you need to research to get started? (laughs) I've been there. After all, CSA involves a different kind of crop plan. You have to manage your customer's expectations. You have to make sure you have enough product to fill those boxes week after week. It's a beast. Now, CSA is our farm's bread and butter, and we've been doing our 18-week season for a really long time, and it's now about 60% of our farm's annual income. We're consistently scoring an annual retention rate of 85%, but that didn't happen overnight. We made a lot of mistakes, like figuring out the production system and how to find the right clients and keep them, and frankly, just how to make CSA profitable which is why I want to help new CSA farmers sidestep some of those expensive mistakes and get their CSA stronger, faster. If you're a farmer that's thinking about starting a CSA, I want to invite you to my free webinar. It's called The Three Mistakes Rookie CSA Farmers Make and How to Avoid Them. You can register at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash masterclass and select from the time options that are available each week. Now, this is a free webinar. It's designed to help new CSA farmers learn the framework for a profitable and resilient CSA. At the end of the webinar, I'll share some information about my online program called CSA Quick Start, which is designed to help vegetable growers start their CSA from scratch in just 60 days. So if you've been waiting for that course to open, you definitely need to attend the webinar. Look, CSA is now the bedrock of my business. Because of our clients' loyalty, we not only feel validated in our work, but we're able to experience consistent financial security and create a season where the farm doesn't run our lives. And I want this for you too. So register for my webinar at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash masterclass and get your CSA started out on the right foot. And now back to the show. Number three is navigation links. So your header is obviously where the navigation lives, your menu lives for your entire website. And your navigation links are gonna allow your users to move around your website easily on paying attention to what are the names of my links, uh, the names of my navigation buttons. So if we have too many navigation elements going across the top so that they have to double up and you start making a second line underneath, that's not a good thing, right? We want to try and fit them all in one line so that it's not crowded. And also thinking about like, what are the key elements that need to be in every navigation bar? So like, I always love to have a products section or a contact us bar or a blog. If you have a blog, 
right? So doing some research and seeing what are the common elements that show up in the navigation and rethinking, maybe I need to change the word that's in the navigation menu. Sometimes that's what I'll do when I'm tweaking my website is I'll rework the architecture of the site, like how are things organized and what is that key top level navigation link. All right, let's move on. Company logo. So the company logo is in the header. It's, it's reinforcing your brand all the time. And it's really important to have uh, that shape dialed in. So are you um, a logo that's more of a square shape? If so, then you're usually in the center of the header bar at the top. If you are a rectangular header like mine, then, excuse me, a rectangular logo like mine, then you're going to probably be in the top left corner. So as you're designing your logo, for those of you who are still new and you haven't even created a logo yet, please think about this. How will it fit in your website design, right? If you've made it so vertically shaped, for instance, that it's not going to fit on a business card or it's not going to be easy to stick in the header of your website. Are you going to be more of a square type image for a logo or more of a rectangular? What's the background going to be? Is it going to be really busy? Is it going to be colored? Like, how is that going to sit on your website? So just think about that. Did you guys hear that? Yeah, that's my bird. I have a bird clock, just so you know. So if you ever listen to my podcast and you occasionally hear birds chirping, that's because it's just struck the top of the hour and my bird clock is impossible to silence. So I hope you enjoy that. Go listen to some of my past episodes now and see if you hear my bird clock. It usually rings once during each episode. Okay, moving on. Next, my call to action button. Uh, This is probably... Next to the image and the tagline is probably the most important thing. Have a clear CTA button. CTA stands for call to action, by the way, in the marketing space. What do you want your visitors on your website to do? You guys, some of you are not clear about this. It all starts here. I have seen so many websites where the call to action button changes over the course of the homepage of the website. It'll be like three different things. You need to stick to one thing. And that key thing should be right there, smack dab in the middle of the image. So what is the main thing you want your site visitors to do on your site? Do you want them to shop now? Right, so for a farm, it might be shop now and they click on that button, it takes them to your online store where they can order stuff. For a nonprofit site, it might be donate now. Uh, If you're a restaurant, it might be book a table, right? So really think about, do I want people to go buy or do I want that button to take them to a landing page, a sales page basically on my website that explains the product more and then there's a buy now button from there? Or do I want to collect leads? Like is the purpose of my website really to just get them on my email list and then I sell through email. Okay, so you gotta, you gotta know what that is. I, I always recommend having a second, kind of secondary call to action button on your website homepage for collecting email addresses as well, but you should have a main call to action button that's doing the main thing and it should be really clear. Now that button needs to be in some kind of contrasting color. So if you've got some kind of, hopefully you have more than one brand color, It should be the other brand color that's not being represented on your site right now. And it should be that same color for all of the buttons, all of the call to action buttons on that homepage of your website, because that creates continuity when the person's on that site. But it should be bright, it should stick out. And put it in the middle of the header image under the tagline, and if possible, if your website theme will let you do this, put it in the top right corner of your website as well next to the navigation links, right? So you've got your navigation menu, and if you can stick it in there in the top right corner, put it there too, because our eyes will read websites in a Z formation. So we'll start over on the left side at the top and see the logo, and then we'll kind of scan to the right. We see that call to action button in the right corner top, and then we come down as a diagonal 
towards the bottom left corner of the header image and we see the tagline and then we finish off the Z and head move our eyes to the right and we read the whole tagline and the call to action button. Okay, so that's kind of what our eyes naturally want to do. So if you have that second call to action button in the top right corner, it's a double reinforcement. Make sure it's the same color. Okay. All right. Contact information is the next element that should be in your heb website header. And this is because users won't then have to go searching around your site to figure out how to get in touch with you. And it's going to improve conversions. It's going to improve customer service so, so much. You guys, I cannot tell you. This is often overlooked. Like people will stick it down at the very bottom in the junk drawer, in the, in the footer of the website. That's okay. You should have it there too. But try to put it near the top. Like have it be like this little banner that's going across the top or maybe have it right in that first header image. For some of you, this is causing you to lose sales because there are there are people who come to the site and are just trying to freaking figure out where you are where are you physically located because they might want to drive to your farm stand or they might want to uh, maybe they saw you on google because google served you up but you're maybe not super local to them and they need to figure out do i need to drive an hour is it a two-hour drive are you even in my state so make sure you've got this information on your website header and, and put your telephone number there too because people will, will try to reach out to you and ask you questions. If they can't find your phone number, they're not going to do that. It's going to be an obstacle. It's going to shut down the sales process and you've lost a customer. This is also important when it comes to SEO. So your SEO juice is helped tremendously when you have name, address, phone number easily visible in that upper element. Because remember, Google, those search engine bots that are walking your website from time to time, the spiders that are crawling your website, they're looking for key information to be able to put into their uh, Google search engines, right? So when someone goes and types something on Google that might lead to your farm, like Google needs to know where you are. This is part of the information it's using to help decide, should I serve this up to this customer, potential customer, as a place to go and visit. So if it's making it hard for the Google Spider to find your location, that's a problem too. So make sure that is in the top elements for sure. Don't make it hard for your clients to A, find you, and B, be able to reach out to you. If you're a business that relies a lot on telephone uh, sales where people are actually calling the store a lot. This is so important to have your phone number. Make your phone number super bright, big. It, you know, it, it needs to be in that first element of your website or at least right underneath it. Okay. Don't make it hard for them to find your phone number. Okay. Social media icons is the seventh thing. By offering easy access to your social channels, you're going to increase your follower count, your engagement across those channels. Some people will want to go check you out on Instagram and just kind of get an idea of what is it that you do there. Uh, so don't make it hard for them to find those. Link them up. And then a shopping cart icon. This will really simplify the process of reaching the checkout. In e-commerce sites, placing a shopping cart icon in the header is going to enable site visitors to complete their purchase easily in a single click regardless of where they've gone on your site. So you're going to decrease the number of abandoned carts by doing this because users will always just be that one step away from the purchase. And a good addition is to add a hover function to the cart so users can also see what's in their basket when they hover over that cart image without having to actually click through. Now, you might not be able to do this uh, for instance, I have a WordPress website. I actually had a little shopping cart image on there as of last week, but it didn't go anywhere. When you clicked on it, it went to like the WooCommerce page of my website, but I don't use WooCommerce. I use LocalLine. So I actually need to check with LocalLine and see if there's a way to um, use a button or something. I think there is a way to embed a button on my website that would show the cart, but I got to look into that. So um, if you have that kind of an e-commerce platform, that's definitely a cool trick. 
Okay, so that is the end of tip number one, which is just to make sure that your website header is including the eight key elements. Okay, so run, do a little quick audit of your website header today and see if some of that stuff is something you can easily add. Tip number two is to use clear and readable fonts in your website. The text in your header needs to be legible and easy, easy to read. So let's use words that are short when possible and choose fonts that are a larger font size that don't have a serif, so a non-serif font. You, headers are usually not the place for you to experiment with stylized fonts and scripts and cursive because that can be really hard to read. Um, also pay attention to the color of your font. Yellow is bad, actually any color in my opinion, besides black or white is not really ideal. Um, I think black is good if the if the image is a, a lighter image and white is a is a good choice if your image is darker. In fact, on my website, I have a transparency over my image to actually darken it so that the words on the screen will pop. Okay, tip number three, choose a site header layout that will flatter the logo. So we talked about the importance of logos before. Um, headers are often the first thing that site visitors see. So having that logo, that company logo right there is super important. Um, when you're building out a new website or when you're choosing your theme, choose a header layout that's going to suit the logo shape and style. So in general, round and square logos look best in the center and rectangular ones look good to the right or the left side. So just kind of keep that in mind and realize that when people click on that logo, they go back to the home page. That's at least what should happen. So it should be linked up that way. All right, tip number four, make sure your website header looks good on mobile. Okay, this is a personal beef I have with um, website designs. A lot of times when I'm auditing websites for farmers, I notice that it might look good on desktop, but when I look at the design on mobile, it's all wonky. Like the picture that they used isn't centering properly or the image was that they what that you should focus on is over on the right side of the picture and you can't see that when it tries to show up on mobile. Or the words in the tagline, there might be a really long word and so it it can't fit on one line on mobile and so it gets broken halfway through without a hyphen and it just looks funny or you have these little orphan words hanging out all by themselves on one line. So um, just take a look at the design on your mobile device to make sure that it looks right. Are there too many words? So I actually have to scroll <laughs> to see the entire header because you have so many things in your tagline and your sub taglines, right? So just take a look, make sure that you can see the tagline, the image, and that the call to action button is visible above the fold on, an, on a mobile device. Super thing, you, easy thing you can check right now. Tip number five, consider using a slider to showcase the different enterprises or special offers you might have going on that month or that week. So this is where you get to create a unique header image for each of your calls to action. I don't think you should have a ton of things on a slider if you're going to use a slider. Some people don't believe in sliders. They just want to have one clear, uh, clear image that never changes so there's clarity for the customer. Um, sometimes I'm a big believer in that. But if you have one or two things that you want to be highlighting that week, you could make use of this slider concept. And you basically go in, you create different images that would be in the header, and then you set the amount of seconds that each image appears before it slides to the left or the right or whatever, okay? So consider organizing them by enterprise. So if you have lots of different ways that you earn revenue and you wanna be able to point to all of those things on your website, you could have a slider image for each one. So if you have, a roadside stand that's a big money maker and you want to have an image all about the roadside stand you could have a different one for people that are going to the farmers markets you could have a different one for 
maybe it's by um by your product line so if you have like beef and that's a big chunk of your income or, or your proteins like that's what it's all about and then you've got another slider for your vegetable product line so for instance mine on my website right now as of january 2023 is I have a shop, our online store weekly, a la carte. I have a slider that's all about that. I have one that's all about joining our CSA. And then I have a third one that says join our CSA sampler, which is our trial membership. Those are kind of three different main offers that lead into my brand. Now on my Digital Farmers website, I have subscribe to the podcast and get onto my email list. That's the main call to action. I have another one that's talking all about Accelerator which is my small group coaching program that is my main key product now that I offer. And then I have my third one, which is all about the CSA Membership Academy. This is that basically that Netflix for CSA members. CSA farmers um, are actually subscribing to my academy for uh, $19 a month. Actually, the first month is only a dollar. So I talk about that offer on that slider. And farmers can then get into that and then they get access to all of those resources that I share with my CSA members. They can use them for their own in their CSA. And so that's showing up as a slider. And then sometimes I have a slider where I add in information about how to join my program CSA Quick Start. I think I have that on there right now just because I am promoting that in the month of January and February. Right. So you can think about what are my key product buckets that earn income for me. It could also just be um, your different enterprises. All right, let's move on to our final tip, which is to change up your website header to keep it fresh. Change them up. This is so fun because headers are extremely flexible. They're easy to quickly adjust and they have a huge impact on how your site looks, right? So you don't have to do a whole lot of optimization and dialing in of language on the text down below on the other sections of your homepage or your website, but a simple image fix in the sliders or in the header images can suddenly refresh your page and make it looks like make it look like it's a brand new website. So that's why I I highly recommend that you're taking a look at your website header layouts from time to time and considering either an image change or a tagline change um, as you see fit. Now Sometimes this can affect your SEO because those taglines are are like H1, they're H1 headers, right? So they are really important text for the SEO juice. So just kind of keep that in mind. You don't want to be changing that language super often because that makes it harder for Google to know what is this farm all about when it's recommending you to people on search results. So you don't need to choose a new template or or alter the entire layout of your site. You just change the header layout, make sure it looks great on all your devices, and you've suddenly given your site a facelift with very little effort. So consider that, put that into your routine, check it out maybe once a quarter, and ask yourself, do I need to change anything here? All right, so your homework, your challenge, should you choose to accept it, is I want you to go do an audit of your website header. Go open it up on your phone. Go look at it on your desktop. And then I want you to make one simple change. Maybe it's adding that shopping cart image in the corner because you just have to check mark a box somewhere in your e-commerce platform to make it happen. Or maybe it's fixing the typography of the text. Maybe you're like, ah, that's really hard to read. And I need to make that easier to read for my clients. Maybe it's making your taglines shorter because when you look at it on your phone, you realize that it's breaking up the word halfway through and it looks funny. Maybe it's changing a new call to action on your CTA button. Or maybe it's making sure that CTA button is showing up above the fold. So you have to shorten your other language, the tagline above it, right? Pick one thing, just one. Okay, don't go crazy, one thing. You can do this one thing. And then if you're willing, I'd love to know what you did. I'd love a little feedback. Go tell me what you did. Go into my private Facebook group for farmers. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash CSA marketing. Easy to remember. 
facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash CSA marketing. And then just go either take a screenshot of it or just tell me what you did because I'd love to know if you made a change. All right. Now, if you are working on your website right now, or you will be soon, maybe you were drawn to this episode because you saw the title and you saw it was about websites and you're working on websites. I have a resource that you're definitely want going to want to check out. It is my e-guide. It's called the 10 Common Website Design Mistakes. I mentioned it a few times in this episode. I have audited a lot of farmer websites. I actually used to do that as a service a few years ago. And so I've seen my fair share of farmer websites. And there's a lot of common mistakes that I saw. I mean, after a while, I felt like a broken record when I was doing my video. I would like record a video audit and kind of walk them through. Here's some things you need to fix. And I noticed that I was starting to say the same things over and over again. So if you want to hear what the most common website design mistakes are, then you can grab the resource at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash website mistakes. You can read it in like two minutes. And I think it's going to be really helpful. It's almost like a checklist for you to use as you're redesigning your website, especially the homepage of your website to be like, oh, uh, I'll better go check that because it's on this list. So I hope that resource will be helpful for you. I think it's it fits with today's topic. Okay, today's show notes can be found at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 194. And if you like today's episode, please go leave me a rating or a review on Apple Podcasts, would you? I'm trying to get like 10 to 15 more reviews this quarter. That would be so awesome. That would be a great gift to me. Or tell someone that you know about my podcast. I would love to let the world know I exist. There's so much good stuff in here. And I have a feeling there's still a lot of farmers out there that don't know I exist. So share it in a Facebook group or go tell a friend or when you go to conferences this season, bring it up and spread the love. That would be so great. Don't forget, if you want to get onto my email list, I have some free stuff to send you to make your marketing better. Go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash subscribe and you're going to get that three month email nurture sequence. It is gold. It is so, so good. So many farmers have actually written me back to say, holy cow, this is amazing. Um, And if you want to continue the conversation, remember that Facebook group, it's called the CSA Marketing Discussion Group. You can either do a a search for it or you can go to facebook.com slash groups slash CSA Marketing. Now I am looking for podcast guests If you have a story to share, if you're doing something innovative or you just want to share stuff that's working on your farm with me, I'd love to hear it. Or maybe you know another farm that's doing something cool. Line me up with them. Hook me up. You can reach out to me at Corinna at MyDigitalFarmer.com. I spell that C-O-R-I-N-N-A. All right. And I'm also on Instagram. I show up there almost every day with a fun little mindset coaching tip or a marketing tip in my Instagram stories. Follow me at my digital farmer. I'd love to see you there. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll catch you next time. I have an interview lined up. It's going to be good. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.